Good day, everybody. My name is Christian. Welcome back to more Subnautica news. Now, this episode, we've got a few things to go through and some really awesome art station things that we haven't seen before. But firstly, we're just starting off with some concept art which has been released by Alex recently. This is called the Sea Monkey. Uh, he's described it as an intelligent and cheeky creature for Subnautica Below Zero. Now, there was a while ago a creature called the Sea Monkey which was scrapped, which was some sort of creature which would steal items from your adventure as you were going around. So they might steal a metal deposit or something like that, whatever, whatever's in your adventure that they can steal, maybe some food. Whether they're going with that same sort of stealing thing, I don't know. It kind of looks like they might be. Those kind of hands look like suction pads, so maybe they're good for getting things out of, like, tight places like an inventory, I don't know. Um, and obviously you can see it with its crest retracted and open, which I'd assume opens when it's either interested in something or it's scared or it's trying to scare something away. Now, someone did comment that it was inspired by Hippocamp, but Alex actually clarified that it's inspired by tree frogs, as you can probably guess from the sort of suction pad looking things. Uh, belugas, not entirely sure where the beluga inspiration came from. Maybe the front, uh, maybe the sort of the back. I really, really don't know where the inspiration from the belugas came from, but either way. And also knife fish, which if you look at the knife fish, you can tell that this definitely does share some similarities with it. So that's a really cool concept. I'm assuming that's probably going to make it into the game now then since he's actually spoken about it. It's a really cool little creature um, and I'd just love to see more of these small fish or whatever you want to call this. So next there is a potential new creature that hasn't really been talked about much yet. There's a creature that's often referenced on the check-ins and also on Trello called the Arrow Ray, which we haven't seen yet or heard of really other than this. So there is a separate ray that they seem to be referencing separately to this called the Arctic Ray, which is this one, supposedly. This is the Arctic Ray. We know that this is probably going to be in the game, uh, and I think it's pretty much all done. But this Arrow Ray we have never seen or really heard of before this, so it's possible that we will get some concept art for it tomorrow, which is a Monday, which is the day they normally release concept art, if you didn't know that. It's possible we might get an Arrow Ray tomorrow, we might get an Ice Worm, we might get a Biome, who knows, because we still haven't seen the Ice Worm, but we've seen it talked about a lot. But the Arrow Ray is something that's sort of slipped under the radar and is now suddenly noticeable. Thank you to Bip and Dino Fuzz for the news on that. And they've also tweeted about it, saying that the Arrow Ray Eye Illumination added. So they've added some sort of illumination to the eye of it. So whatever it is, I'm excited to see what it is, if it is a separate creature to the Arctic Ray, which I'm assuming it is, but really, who knows. So next is something that's a little bit of a joke, but also something that developers are actually taking seriously. So currently the developers are on sort of like a retreat. I uh, don't know where precisely they are, um, but they're on holiday somewhere together, basically. But they're still working on the game, they're discussing, because obviously they don't get a chance to meet that often, because they all work all over the world. But essentially, the Bip and Dino Fuzz all sort of came up with this idea of a spy penguin, which is uh, sort of a creature idea, well, not a creature, it's a sort of robot idea that they've come up with, where you'll be able to drive it around and use the camera on top of it to sort of research animals stuff like that sort of like you might see a fake penguin in a documentary and they actually made a full powerpoint for it that the developers wanted to see because Abraxas asked them to make one if they wanted it to be seriously considered so of course they did do that and it has some descriptions of the spy penguin mark 5 is inspired by real world penguin drones that are used by scientists to study wild penguins close up without disrupting their daily lives too much since Below Zero features significantly more land than the original Subnautica, an ability to survey the frozen landscape, the camera drone would be a useful item to have. While a flying drone is more futuristic, there are some issues with it that have to be taken into consideration, such as flying out of bounds or being able to observe areas that you shouldn't be able to yet. The landlocked spy penguin is therefore superior to a flying drone due to mostly in part looking like an adorable baby penguin. So the spy penguin seems most appropriate as an early mid-game item, so the blueprint would be located in Altera Research Base. A fellow penguin-oriented colleague was working on the drone as a side project but left it sitting on a table one day and never returned. Honor your colleague by stealing their idea using the scanner it's what they would have wanted so obviously this isn't a confirmed thing this is just something that the fans have sort of suggested 
to the developers, but they are probably seriously considering it because they have they have sat around and looked at the presentation. As the penguins are attracted to the spy penguin and will chirp at it, as it resembles their young, penguins will try to protect it from nearby predators. Predators will try to eat the spy penguin, so watch out for snow stalkers and pinnacarids. Pressing a button will cause the spy penguin to play pre-recorded penguin juvenile sounds. This will attract penguins from further distances. It will also attract ice worms if they're in the area, making the spy penguin a great one-time distraction. At least it's better than killing real penguin babies, which is very accurate. There's different camera views, which is one, which is stuck in a forward-facing position, and two, which will open the penguin's mouth, allowing the camera to extend upwards on a rod. Interesting. Access to tight spaces. While its adorable appearance may be its greatest advantage, it does have some others that would prove useful to the player. Juvenile ice worms may have bored holes leading to potential raw material rich areas. These would be inaccessible to the player due to their size, but the drone would be small enough to roll right in. Who knows what could be on the other end of a tunnel, so why not send the spy penguin to get mauled by whatever is there? It's a very good point. To make up for its lack of exploration potential as a landlocked drone, the spy penguin possesses a robotic arm it can collect resources with. Unfortunately, because it's so small, it can only have a 2x2 or 3x3 inventory space. As a small construct, the spy penguin would have issues getting stuck on small ledges. For this, it would be necessary to give the spy penguin an ability to perform a small hop just like the real thing. Durability and energy. The spy penguin's health would be very low, around 80 to 100 compared to the Seamoth's 300. This would only afford protection about against 3 to 4 attacks from a mid sized predator such as the Snowstalker, while an ice worm could destroy it immediately. As for power, the spy penguin would be powered by either two batteries or a single power cell. So they've given a HUD concept as well of, of what the HUD might look like with different things, so there'd be ground vibrations and noise produced. Uh, and all the normal stuff that you'd see on the HUD. And then they've also created an example PDA entry with the uh, sort of art created by Teenage Dirtbag, which looks really cool. Actually looks official. When I first saw it, I thought, oh my god, they've actually done it. But um, yes, uh, so at long last, after countless weeks of very productive, highly efficient work, the Spy Penguin has been perfected with the Mark V iteration. Well, as perfect as that can get it with the materials I've been able to convince the Vespa crew to send down. Maybe I should have asked for more materials to make a scarf with. Anyway, following the unfortunate losses of Mark II and Mark III due to the jet boosters melting the ice, I have instead equipped the treads with hydraulics to allow for a small jump. Penguins were never truly meant to fly, so let's try and keep it natural here. Besides, seeing other little penguins jump makes it for great postcards. Some brilliant features returning from previous iterations are a speaker that plays pre-recorded penguin calls. Thankfully I backed up the file this time so I didn't need to record that again. Had a close run in with an ang angry parent last time. High powered headlights in place of the lower eyes, a camera with full 360 vision when extended, still scares the penguins when it's exposed unfortunately, a single long arm for collecting samples that I found in some of the small tunnels left by young ice worms. Mark 1 saw the immediate replacement of the feet as tests proved that they couldn't hold up against the wind. With every subsequent iteration the grippy treads have proven to be quite efficient and despite their unnatural appearance the penguins didn't seem to mind at all. Then why do they hate the camera? Come on. Long distance travelling is still an issue though. I thought that alien ion based energy would have worked but all it did was increase the odds of combustion by an approximate 30% bringing the odds to a concerning 70%. Luck wasn't on my side that day and I don't think the boss would have been either if he found that we were tampering with ion cubes. Now that I think about it, that drone is likely still out there, so what if it got lost in ice worm territory? That's why I've been working on these soundproof ice shoes. Need to reach that drone before my colleagues start finding green dust all over the ice. Gwen Penn signing off. Gwen Penn, it's a good name. Yeah, that's sort of quite funny. That's sort of the uh, PDA entry they would like to see put into the game. Uh, they've also got some quotes uh, uh, from excellent people with excellent taste, and I am actually here, so I'm an excellent person. Apparently, uh, I basically just said this will make documentaries easier to make. Aki said that he wanted flying ones, but this might take the number one spot. Uh, Mobius basically said it's great. IGP said it's friggin' dope. And then there's some other quotes from different testers, which is pretty cool. So that's just basically them saying consideration, thanks, and then from V, Bippity, Teenage Dirtbag, and Dino Fuzz. So that's pretty cool. Just something that I thought you might want to see. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that. Would you like to see that in the game? Obviously, it's something that they seem to be considering. So we'll see. Now, on to the most important stuff that you've probably been waiting for the longest. This is some new models which have been released, or at least they're not 3D because we can't actually move them around ourselves. But there's some art station screenshots of 3D models of certain creatures. We've got two of them at the moment. We've got the Bone Shark and the Squid Shark. So we'll start off with the Bone Shark. It's a really good looking model, as are all of the models for Smallsky. I've never seen a model that I don't like. It's really, really well detailed, awesome colour scheme. It looks terrifying. It's sort of got like a disjointed jaw, but on the top, 
Uh, so I'm guessing that means it can open its mouth as wide as it possibly can. That's sort of the idea with this, I would guess. But again, the sort of concept art makes it look reasonably small. I would imagine it's probably around the size of a stalker or maybe a bone shark at a stretch. I wouldn't say it's that massive, but it looks really, really cool, and I can't wait to see it in the game, because I'm assuming by there being a 3D model of it, that's pretty much confirming that it's in. And also, as Bifty has noted, they all, all of Alex's creatures seem to have this sort of end where they don't really have a tail fin, they just sort of end at a point. Um, and I've noticed that actually now on a lot of creatures that he's done, it seems to be a big theme, so watch out for that. Moving on to the next one, which is my personal favourite, this is the Squid Shark. Really, really terrifying creature. Uh, as you can see, the mouth opens like that, as it did in the concept art, but it looks even worse in 3D. It has way too many teeth, which is terrifying. It has like a, an air intake like you'd see on a car, but on the side. It has a slitty red eye thing, and it also has tentacles coming out the bottom. It's got the same sort of back-sized, back-shaped thing as the brute shark. It just looks awesome. It has a very sharky look to it, and especially from all the different angles, you can see with the mouth shut, it's sort of much more streamlined and closed. And essentially, it just looks brilliant. Especially from the top view, it looks a lot like a shark. They've done a really, really great job with that. But that's pretty much it. I haven't got anything else to show you guys. That's essentially all I have. So let me know what you think of the Spy Penguin Mark V, whether you'd like to see that in the game, and also which of these two creatures you're most excited for, the Squid Shark or the Brute Shark. I'd really be interested. Personally, I'm really looking forward to the Squid Shark. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao, my friends.